What's the coolest way to carry my stuff around this summer? This hand crocheted market bag, of course. And the best part is, today I'm going to show you a really easy way to make your own. Hi, I'm Ash, and today I have a little extra spring in my step because it's finally spring here. Here in South Dakota, it has felt like a never-ending winter. It's been cold, cold, snow, cold again, more snow, more snow, and now we are having insane flooding. But last week was consistently in the 50s, and I checked the forecast, and next Wednesday is supposed to be a whopping 69 degrees, so I finally have my faith back in our weather, and I'm thinking about spring. And everywhere I look, I keep seeing these adorable crocheted market bags. I can totally picture myself with one of those market bags. I've got a loaf of fresh French bread, some bright yellow lemons, a bouquet of fresh flowers. Okay, so what's really in my bag is probably my craft project du jour and a bottle of red wine. Because wine not. Always have red wine. But that's what I love about this bag. It's very versatile and fun, and I can carry around my wine and my craft projects all summer pretending like I'm the kind of person that frequents the farmer's market. So I wanna to get to the bag, but first, are you subscribed to my channel yet? Trust me, in a minute you are going to be so consumed with crocheting the most amazing market bag that you're not gonna to remember to do it. And then you're gonna miss all of the other amazing projects I'm bringing to my channel every week. So just hit that little subscribe button right now. For my bag, I'm using a medium weight, 100% cotton yarn. Wool does not feel like summer to me, so trust me, go with the cotton and you'll be glad you did. I'm doing my bag in a two-tone color block with a gray on the bottom and a cream on the top. I thought about doing the trim in a different color, but I decided to just keep it simple and classy. And I'm using my size H crochet hook today. A lot of the market bags that I've seen around are net all the way around, and I think that looks great. But I'm going to be doing my bag with a more structured bottom. I do plan to use this for more than just groceries, so I think that extra structure will really help. So I'm going to start this project with the magic loop, and then I'm just going to keep increasing my circle as I go until it's the size that I want. Of course, I'm going to give you the pattern for this as we go, but if you want to know more about the background to crocheting circles and really how you need to do it to make it grow so that you can do any pattern you want, check out the tutorial I have completely dedicated to crocheting circles. To start a magic loop, pull the yarn over your hand and then back up so it crosses over itself and the tail is down. Now insert your hook under the first piece and over the second. Pull your yarn over with your hook and then pull it through the loop you have created with your two yarn strands. It will feel weird at this point, but it's okay. Now chain one to help secure it. and chain a second to prepare to double crochet. Now you're going to do 10 double crochets around your chain. I'll show you what that looks like. Yarn over, put your hook down under the magic loop, grab your yarn and pull it under the loop, yarn over again, and pull through two, and then pull through two again. Continue to do that until you have 10 double crochets in your magic loop. Then you can pull your string tighter, that's where the magic happens, and you're ready to slip stitch into that very first chain that you started with. Start again by chaining two, and then in that second round, you're going to be doing two double crochets in that very first stitch that your chain came from, and then continuing with two double crochets in every stitch all the way around. So in this round, you will go from 10 stitches to 20 stitches. Again, slip stitch into that first stitch to end this row, and then you can chain two and start row three. Row three will start with two double crochets in that first stitch, and then one double crochet in the following stitch. 
you're going to continue that pattern with two in one and one in the next all the way around. This will take this row from 20 stitches to 30 stitches. And round four follows that same pattern. So you'll start the same exact way, and this time you'll do two double crochets in the first stitch, and then one double crochet in each of the next two stitches. And just continue that pattern, two double crochets in one stitch, and then one double crochet in each of the two next stitches. This is gonna take your round from 30 to 40. We're increasing by 10 each time. And this pattern where you continue to spread out the stitches that you do two double crochets in will continue all the way through row eight. So in the fifth round, you'll still be adding 10 stitches to 50. And by the eighth round, you should be ending with 80 stitches. Again, if this doesn't make a lot of sense to you, go check out the tutorial on my channel about how a circle is made. Here is the pattern for the base that we just completed. All of this information is available on my website, alloplum.com, or feel free to take a moment and screenshot this print. Now we're going to move on to the net portion of our bag, and I just wanted to take a quick pause to remind you that no matter what you do on this section, your bag is going to turn out wonderfully. Following patterns like this that have netting have always been a little challenging, even for me. So I'm going to do my best to explain it as I go, but don't worry if you are not exactly with me. It really will turn out wonderfully in the end, even if you don't have every single stitch completely matching what mine is. And if you think your bag just isn't looking right and you can't figure out why, drop me a comment below and let me know what's going on and I will do my best to help you better decipher my pattern. And here's the finished base of my bag. I have eight total rows and it's 80 stitches around. So to start the netting, I'm going to start by chaining seven. Oh, here's my cat assistant, Helen, not being very helpful. So back to it. To start the netting, chain seven. Count five stitches from the chain and then do a slip stitch into that stitch. This is what's going to make our netting pattern as we go. Continue to follow this pattern all the way around. Seven chains and then count five from the chain and do a slip stitch into that stitch. Now when you get to the end of your row, you should end the stitch before your first chain started. Chain four just to get started again and then slip stitch around the first chain. Now you will go back to chaining seven, but now this is where it gets easy because you don't have to count up the stitches anymore. Simply slip stitch into the next chain and repeat. Chain seven and slip stitch into the next chain. When I come to the end of the second row, I'm just going to skip over that mini chain I made in the first round and keep going. Those four stitches won't be missed in this netting and it will make it easier as you can just continue to go around and around now without stopping at the end of each row. Continue like this until you reach the desired length for your first color. For me, that was six rows and it measured out at about seven inches tall when laying flat. Now I'm going to change colors to my cream yarn by starting my slip stitch around the chain, but instead of yarning over with my gray, I will slip this slip knot of cream yarn onto my hook and continue with the cream yarn from there. I'm doing three rows of cream, which equals about 3.5 inches when laying flat. To do the top edge, you're going to single crochet in each chain stitch and double crochet in each of the regular stitches all the way around. Doing a double crochet in each of the regular stitches will help even out the height difference between where your netting connects to the row below and where your chains are. This is not necessary and you can just do a straight single crochet all the way around your bag, but you will end up with more of a scalloped edge on the edge of your bag. After the first row, I had 92 total stitches around my bag, but this is not critical to the pattern, so if you are a little bit different than me, that's okay. 
For the next two rows, I'm continuing to do all single crochets. However, I'm following a pattern of four single crochets, then join two all the way around on both of these last two rows. By decreasing my stitches just a little bit, I'm straightening out the top edging of my bag and compensating for those extra stitches in length that my chains created earlier. For my strap, I'm going to crochet 10 single crochets across, turn my work, chain one, and go 10 single crochets back. I'll repeat that 83 times and be ready to join my strap to the other side of my bag. Now find the exact opposite side of your strap to attach to the other side. Make sure you have the right side of the bag and the right side of the loose end of the strap facing each other, and then slip stitch across all 10 stitches to connect it to the bag. Trim off and weave in all of your loose ends and you're done. And here is my finished bag. When I was done attaching the strap to the other side, I did go ahead and block out just the top edging of my bag. To block something, if you're not familiar, is just to get it wet and then let it dry in the shape that you want it to have. So I got this top edge wet because it still had a little bit of a wave to it that I really didn't want it to have. And I laid it flat on a towel and just kind of stretched and pulled it a little bit here and there to get it a nice flat edge. I don't block all of my projects by any means, but if you're struggling with any of your projects and they just don't have quite that shape you want, give blocking a try. I guarantee you just that little extra step will make your projects look even more professional. And I've been super obsessed with tassels and pom-poms lately, so I'm thinking about adding a little tassel pom-pom bag charm. If you want to see how to make a tassel bag charm, drop a note in the comments below and I will add one to this bag and I will show you the tutorial. Well, that's all for today. Don't forget, if you liked this tutorial, like the video too, and stop back again soon because I've already started working on my next project. Bye. For more information and the written description to this pattern, check out my website, aloeplum.com. I should make this bag in every color. I could make a wine bottle tote just like this.